Well, good morning, Oakwood Christian Church, and happy Father's Day to all the dads here, and what an awesome service we've had already to see that many baptisms on Father's Day, and to commend the dads of all those boys and the moms of all those boys that are raising them in the Lord. What a powerful testimony of God's work in our lives, and just a great time, once again, to be a part of God's church, to be a part of God's kingdom. And uh, just just excited. We've been in a series called On the Road Again to Financial Freedom. And uh, today is part three. And today we'll be talking about the provision of the Lord, God's provision for our lives. You know, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God commissions himself to protect, to provide, and to care for you. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4 in the New Testament If you didn't bring your Bible, you're welcome to grab one there in the seat around you. You can also get on our app, and you can do the sermon notes through that. And it has all the notes and all the scriptures right there on the phone or your iPad right there before you. And I know more and more people are taking advantage of that every week, so we invite you to be a part of that. Philippians chapter 4, we're going to be looking at one verse uh, today uh, in specific. Let me give you a little bit of background here. In this section, uh, it's been talking about God's provision And the Apostle Paul to this letter to the church in Philippi, he's been commending them on giving and just really rejoicing um, in how God has provided through the people in these churches uh, to provide for the needs of ministry and how he hasn't had to go without and and the gospel's being spread because of the resources and the faithfulness of God's provision given to these people. And these people are tithing and they're giving and it's just doing wonderful things in ministry. And then we get down here to uh, verse 19. And this is our, our, our uh, verse for this morning. I really want you to focus in on this. Uh, Philippians 4.19. This is what it says. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now, that sounds like a very simple, short little verse, but don't miss the huge, impactful meaning of it. That my God, now remember what he's, what he's on the heels of is all these things about churches and God providing for all these things. And then he's reminding them, he's commending these Christians at the end and he's, he's imploring them, he's reminding them here at the end, he says, and remember, my God will supply some of your needs. No, my God will supply a small amount. No, he says, my God will supply every need of yours. You see, God is the supplier God is the provider. And God always provides for his children, though often it is not in the way we expect or even hope. God always provides for his children, but often it's in a way that we didn't expect or maybe that we didn't even hope for. The challenge is for us is to see his provision, to see his care, even when it is different than what we expect. Because God is God. His ways are always higher and always better than our ways. We're reminded of that in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9. It says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now the cool thing about God is he graciously gives us some insight into the Scriptures or through the scriptures, into what he is doing in our lives. I love the way John Piper says it, uh, the author and the the pastor John Piper. Listen to what he says. He says, God is always doing 10,000 things in your life, but you may only be aware of about three of them. How is that possible? It's because God is infinite. He's all-powerful. And so you can be doing 10,000 things in your life, but you're probably only aware of about three of them. You see, over and over again, Jesus' disciples missed it. They missed what Jesus was doing, what he was teaching them, right in front of them. They missed the point of the miracles. They missed some of the lessons that Jesus was trying to teach them, which should give us hope, because sometimes we have our own lack of clarity and we miss some things. But this morning, I want to share with you four important principles of understanding how God provides and takes care of us. We need to understand these things. And the first thing we need to understand is this. God may provide differently than we expect. 
We pray for God's provision, God provide for us. He may provide differently than we expect. Do you remember the Israelites when they escaped the captivity in Egypt? Remember their slaves in Egypt? And, you know, uh, uh, Moses goes to Pharaoh, hey, let my people go. They finally get released, and they go off, and they're on their way to the promised land, but they have to go through this desert experience before they get there. And one of the biggest challenges when you send 100,000 or a few hundred thousand uh, Israelites into the desert is it's hard to feed that many nomads in the desert. It's, far, it's, it's really hard to find enough food to eat. And over and over again, God provided supernaturally for his people there. If God could provide for hundreds of thousands of Israelites in the desert, then I think surely he could provide for one family here in Enid, Oklahoma. One of the precious testimonies in Scripture about this is in Psalm 37, verse 25. The writer there in Psalm says, I have been young, and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. But even with God's supernatural provision, the Israelites, they still complained and grumbled. Do you remember that? They were complaining and grumbling in the desert about the food that God was providing for them. They longed for the food back when they were slaves in Egypt. God was literally providing for them bread from heaven called manna, enough each day to feed them, and fresh every morning. But they wanted their provision a different way. We do the same, same thing sometimes. We want it our way, and sometimes we can actually lose how God is providing because it's in a way that we didn't expect. This lesson has spoken to me over the years. Ask God to provide for you in whatever way He deems fit. Don't grumble against God's supernatural, unexpected ways of providing for us that may be different than what we think. I've had the privilege to know uh, personally a great pastor and mentor and friend of mine named Bob Russell. Some of you may be familiar with him and his ministry. Uh, he was at a, a church in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, when he was there, it grew from 200 to over 17,000 people. Uh, he retired in 2006, and today that church runs about 28,000 people in services on the weekend. Just amazing work uh, that God has done through that ministry and through that man. One of the things that's really cool about Bob Russell is I, right when I became senior minister here, I actually got to go on a mentoring retreat and actually got to go to Louisville, Kentucky, meet with Bob. Um, it, it was awesome. He just poured leadership and wisdom into our life. Uh, well, one thing that was amazing about Bob is I get emails from him still to this day. Um, we, we stay in contact, probably to hear from him once or twice a month. One of the ways he keeps in tr of track of all the ministers is about 300 of us that have been through his mentoring ministry is through this thing called Bob Russell Benevolence Grants. Now, let me tell you how this works. There's a benefactor in California who's a very wealthy businessman, and he wants to bless families in need. And what this man has chosen to do is he sends hundreds of thousands of dollars to Bob Russell in Louisville, Kentucky. Because he knew of Bob's ministry, because he knew Bob was a high-integrity guy, he sends him these money, and he says, I want you to take these hundreds of thousands of dollars that I'm giving you, and I want you to put them into the hands of people that need them you know, all over the United States, all over the world. And so the way Bob has chosen to do that is there's a, there's a grant application, and there's you know, rules with it for integrity that you can't give it to your immediate family, uh, you can't apply for them. But we, we fill out an application, we apply, and we let them know of needs. And so he'll shoot me an email and say, do you have anyone in your congregation that's in need of a benevolence grant? Here's the criteria for it. And whether it be something medical or someone lost their job or whatever the circumstance in, uh, then we have the opportunity to send that in to them. They pray over it. They look at the application and they disperse the funds uh, as needed, usually somewhere between $500 and $1,000. In the last seven years here at Oakwood, I've had the privilege of presenting checks to 11 families through the Bob Russell Benevolence Grant. Families that had medical bills, families that were in need not making ends meet, families that maybe someone lost their job or they lost a loved one that caused them to get into some dire circumstances. Now you tell me, the supernatural God, how he provides for that. Because it's fun for me to try to explain it to people when they get this grant in our church. Yeah, there's a guy in California that God blessed with wealth. They gave it to a minister in Louisville, Kentucky. They then sent me an email and said, hey, is there anyone in your church in need? And I applied for you, and God provided. Now, would that be the way you would expect God to provide for you? Absolutely not. People that receive this benevolence grant, they look at it, and they, they're, they're like, wow, I, you know, where did this come from? Well, it came from California by way of Louisville, Kentucky, and it's just God. It's just God. He provides in ways that we don't expect. 
I know some of us can get discouraged sometimes because we don't feel like maybe God's providing in the way that we expected. Some of you might be working a job right now, and you're probably doing something that's a little bit different than what you thought you'd expected to do, maybe something different than your schooling, maybe something different than you'd hoped for in your life. But don't always wish for something different because God is using your current circumstances to provide exactly what you need in that time. If we're always looking to something else or to get more or to do something else, we can't be present where we are and we can't be faithful where we are. And 1 Thessalonians 5.18 reminded me of this this week. It says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Notice it says there to give, to give thanks in all all circumstances, in every circumstance. You want to know what God's will is? It's that you'd be thankful that you would see and trust Him in all of your circumstances. Now, I'm not saying this morning that you can't have aspirations, that you can't have dreams to, to move into a different job, that it might not, that you, know, you shouldn't be inspired you know, in your faith to, to go after something that you feel like God's moving you toward. But I just think sometimes we just need to slow down if we really open our eyes and we really think a little bit, we can actually see what God is doing in the here and the now. And it may be providing for us in a way that we didn't expect, but he's still providing for us. The second thing I think we need to understand this morning is that God provides more of himself. God provides more of himself. You see, our greatest need is not more money and it is not more things. Our greatest need is more of God in our lives. And what's awesome about that is that God gladly gives that to us. He is the Father that loves to provide for His children. In Matthew 7, verses 9-11, through 11, Jesus was preaching the Sermon on the Mount, and He said this, Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask Him? You see, God's a provider. He loves to provide for His children. He loves to take care of His children. Scripture tells us to make the pursuit of God, to get more of Him in our life, the primary function of our lives. In Matthew 6, 33, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, just a little bit before, it says this, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added to you. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Where do you find your deepest root of joy in your life? Is it what God gives to you? Or is it who God is to you? You see, God graciously guides us into this greater realization that our ultimate need in life is not more things, is not more stuff. It is actually more of His Word, more of His ways. It's actually really, truly more of Him. We need more of God in our lives, and we need to understand that God provides more of himself. The third thing this morning, God's ultimate provision has already been given in the gospel. God's ultimate provision for our lives has already been given in the gospel. The good news that he sent his son to die on the cross for us. You see, we ask God many things. We ask God for many, many things. But the greatest thing that we could ever receive from him, he has already given us in Jesus Christ. What God has given us in the gospel of Jesus Christ is light years ahead of every other provision and care that we could ever seek Him for. And when we trust in Christ, we have decisively secured for us the ultimate good thing that we need and want in our life. And if it doesn't come to its full fruition, in its, in its full fruition it will in the future. It's just a matter of time. James chapter 1, uh, verse 17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Every truly good thing in our lives comes straight from the Father in heaven. And the ultimate good He provides us with makes our lives, enhances our lives, and makes them so much better. Jesus and the gospel is the ultimate treasure. And so we see here 
that God may provide differently than we expect, that God provides more of himself, that his provision has already been made in full, really, truly, through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the fourth thing we need to understand is that God provides both now and in eternity. God promises and he provides for us both now and in eternity. So let's first focus on the now part, okay? Because I think there's three specific ways that God provides for us now that he wants us to, in turn, honor him with. Three different reasons he gives us resources today. The first reason is to provide for your family. God gives you finances and the ability to make money to provide for your family. To provide for your family. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 says this. If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. You see, God's best, His will, is that families be cared for financially, not by the government, not by some assistance program, not by some social agencies, and not even really by a church. God's design and His desire is that husbands and fathers and wives and mothers would provide for their families. Now, I want to be clear on this text this morning, because this does not apply to those who are temporarily unemployed or who have become incapacitated in some way. God's not speaking there to those people. God is not shaming someone who has fallen on a hard time that may be perhaps between jobs. But God is telling us here that we're supposed to work hard, that we're not to be lazy, and that we're not to be irresponsible in the way that we spend the resources that he's given us. That we need to put our families and provide for our families first. Scripture says that working hard and providing for your family is to be commended. You know, we usually hear about the extremes on both ends of this spectrum of providing for the family. On, on one extreme, our hearts break for those that are abused or neglected. Those children that are neglected in their homes because they have parents who stagger in from some high of methamphetamine or some alcohol-induced fog and they stumble in and they don't provide for their family and they don't provide for their children and they live in filth without proper nourishment because they have made poor choices. We grieve with single mothers who have ex-husbands who do not even try to keep up with their court-mandated child support. That's one extreme. But on the other extreme, we also have parents today that are enabling parents, and they subsidize the irresponsible and immoral behavior of their young adult children, sometimes into their late 20s and sometimes even into their early 30s. These children need to be independent, but they're still expecting mom and dad to come along behind them and to clean up their financial messes. And with their poor decisions and irresponsibility, they are not taking care of their families, and they're not honoring God. And sometimes as parents, we love our kids so much that we want to bail them out of everything. But sometimes that's not the best thing that we can do. We are called by God, though, to provide for our families. The second way here in the now, God gives us these resources, is to provide for the needs of others. We're supposed to first provide for the needs of our families. And when they are fed, and when they are sheltered, and when they are clothed, and they have what they need, then we are called to provide for the needs of others. We are called to share what God has given us. You see, God blesses those who bless others in His name. In Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says, In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak. And remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how He Himself said, It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. We can do this individually, we can do this person to person as we see needs, or we can do this as a team, as kind of a church family or a small group working together to meet needs. But God takes care of us through his provision so that we can help others in their time of need. In Acts chapter 2 verses 44 and 45 it says this, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. Acts 2 there is talking about the first church. That the members of the church as they're coming to Jesus Christ, that they were taking care of the needs of others as the needs arose within that congregation. 
in James chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, we're reminded of this same principle in a different way. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or without daily food. If one of you says to him, hey, go, I wish you well, stay warm and fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, a comparison here, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. In other words, if you're going to be a Christian, and you're supposed to called to be loving and compassionate, you need to put that into action. Or your faith that you claim in Jesus Christ is a dead faith. What good does it do if we tell somebody, hey, I, I, wish, you, I wish you well, go be warm and well fed, when we know that they need help. So God is counting on His people to be compassionate and to do something to meet the physical needs of others around them. And the third way that He gives us resources now that we are to provide is to provide for the expansion of God's kingdom. You see, God blesses us so that we can play a, a part in building His kingdom in this world, using a portion of what He gives us to reach the lost, to advance the cause of the gospel, to fund the ministries and the outreaches of the church. You see, God's primary means of financing the advance of the gospel and the mission has always been the tithes and offerings of His people. I mean, the fact is, you and I would not be sitting in here today in relationship with one another as we are without the giving of God's people who came before us. You can't have a facility like we have, tools like we have. You can't have a children's wing that's stocked with curriculum and workbooks and pages. We can't provide for camps and Christ and youth conferences for youth to go get away and, and to get away from the world, to get away from it all and just, just get with God. None of those opportunities are possible if we keep all of God's resources to ourselves. And so one of the reasons he provides for us in the here and in the now is not only to provide for our family and not only to provide for the needs of others, but to provide for the kingdom's expansion. Now let's talk eternity. As for providing into eternity, Hebrews 11 gives us two different perspectives on God's provision and care for us. You might know Hebrews 11, known as the Faith Hall of Fame. You see, some by faith in that passage came through the difficulties while others completely lost their lives. But at the end of Hebrews 11, both types are commended for their mighty faith. You see, God does not always provide and care for us in the ways that we expect in this life. The Bible doesn't promise that God's going to provide exactly how you think. You look at some of those like Peter, James, John, and the Apostle Paul, they gave their lives for the gospel. And they viewed the gospel, the fact that Jesus had died for them on the cross, the fact that he'd rose again, that was the treasure. And it was not to be lost at any cost. And God provided, even for those precious saints, even into eternal life. You know, we may not receive complete healing in this world, but we will receive complete healing in eternity. You may not get the answer that you want to the greatest prayer you've ever prayed in your life in this world, but you will receive fully the will of God in eternity. Some days God's provision and care will seem distant from you in this world. It'll seem distant, but ultimate peace and the ever-present fulfillment of God and all of His promises is in eternal life. We long for our world to stop raging and to be at peace, but the ultimate peace only comes in eternity. You know, our hearts ache under the pressures of this life, but will only be made whole in eternity. You see, we were not made to have earth be our final destination. We were made for another world and God loves you, and He wants to save you, and He wants to give you hope and a future, and He wants you to be adopted into His family as one of His children, not one of them that's astray, but one that's coming into His presence. And then He promises, I'll provide everything that you need. 
if you'll just call me Father. You know, it's Father's Day. And if you've never called the God of heaven your Father, I think today will be a good day to make that decision. As we experienced earlier in this service when we had six baptisms. God loves you. He wants to save you. He wants you to put his faith, your faith in Him. He wants you to love Him and to follow Jesus, His Son. He wants you to confess Him before men so that He can confess you before the Father in Heaven. He wants you to be obedient to Christian baptism. He wants you to seek first His kingdom and His righteousness and understand that all of these other things will be added unto you if you'll just focus and give your life on Him. But we need to come to the place where we call Him Father and understand He's the best dad that you'll ever have. Let's pray.